Get subscribed to Chat Sports because, Mitch, I don't know if you know this, we're plugging out videos like every day and like three or four per day because we like to hustle for you guys. YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. I'm doing videos. Mitch is doing videos. Tom, where is he? He's in the draft lab again. That's why he's not on today's show. He's getting you guys ready for the offseason. Free videos every single day covering the latest NFL news and rumors, and I can't wait for the playoffs. They're just around the corner. Get subscribed and turn on those notifications. All right, let's get into the latest around the Kansas City Chiefs. Not only does this guy have a great first name, but Mitchell Schwartz is one of the best offensive tackles in all of football, and he's expected to miss the remainder of the season. And I've thought that this is the way it was going to go for about a month now, Mitch, because what have we been hearing from Kansas City from Take Andy Reid? The, cla the classic, he's day-to-day -day with the back injury. Yep. He's, you know, he's communicating with the trainers, with us, about how he's feeling. Dude, back things, they don't really go away. Like, you just kind of hope that you wake up one day and it feels better. This is problematic, not only for this year, but potentially long-term as well, that your all-pro right tackle may have Tyron Smith type of injuries popping up now. A yeah. little bit concerning. I would not expect him to return this season. Who knows? They may need to give him surgery this offseason, which is even a bigger problem. But keep tabs on the latest with Mitchell Schwartz uh, with me on the Kansas City Chiefs report because uh, it's not looking good for him. Someone it is looking good for, at least better for, yes. Sammy Watkins, Mitch, who just can't help himself but yeah. either pull his hamstring or strain a calf. And, uh, yeah, he's dealing with another calf injury. Good news is, though, not serious. No tear, nothing like that. They'll sit him in week 17, obviously. The, the Chiefs yep. have clinched. And uh, you get the first round by. So basically, two and a half, three weeks off here. And then the divisional round, they're hoping, they think he probably will be back by then, which is a good sign because Sammy in the playoffs since he's joined Kansas City, <laughs> say what you want. Regular season Sammy, he's usually hurt and doesn't do much. Playoff Sammy, clutch as hell and that is what the Chiefs are hoping they get this season as well I mean when you look at his numbers here I mean 37 catches this is in 10 games but the one thing that Watkins brings and a lot of these players bring for the Chiefs offense is the ability to stretch the field you have Tyreek Hill McCole Hardman Sammy Watkins those are three receivers that probably run sub four fours yeah and then you got the arm of Patrick Mahomes Watkins might not always light it up in the stat sheet but he is definitely a huge huge contributor in the offense in general the latest on Clyde edwards Elaire as well. Missed week 16 against the Falcons. We knew this was going to be the case, Mitch. He won't play in week 17. I think he's kind of on that Watkins timeline here where yep. it's, you know, maybe he gets, he gets ready to go uh, for that divisional round or the conference title game. High ankle sprain, uh, a bit of a hip strain as well. It'll be about a month by the time the Chiefs play in the playoffs. That's probably borderline there because we, you know, high ankles are about three to four weeks depending on the player there. Maybe he's more AFC title game ready, but that's the latest there is that he's on track. He should return at some point in the playoffs, but obviously, like most of these guys, not going to play here in week 17. And I don't know about you, Mitch, but Le'Veon Bell ain't Clyde edwards helaire He did not look that good against the Falcons this past week. I was just going to say that. I mean, when you go back and you watch the game tape of the Chiefs against the Falcons, the one thing that I kept thinking about to myself was, wow, this Chiefs offense does really miss Clyde edwards helaire yep. And I know a lot of times we go back – and we say, oh, it doesn't matter who the running back is because you have this amazing passing game. But Atlanta did not respect the run no. whatsoever. And I'll give the Falcons, Raheem Morris, a lot of credit. They've done a lot better job of, of late, at least with that defense. But even though you think that you can just put any running back in the backfield, they're going to succeed, and you might be able to do it. But Le'Veon Bell does not look good, and he's not even close to being on the level of Clyde edwards -Alain. I think it's clear Bell's been more effective when he's been a complimentary back. He's had two games now where yeah. he's been able to have the opportunity to be the lead back. Hasn't executed well. He has not been a, a lead type of runner like he was in Pittsburgh. He's much better as a number two at this point. So these are three guys. Schwartz probably done for the year. We'll see on the other two guys. Who's the biggest lost? Who hurts the most by not being in the lineup? Type MS for Mitchell Schwartz. Type SW for Sammy Watkins. Type CEH for Clyde edwards Elaire. I actually think it's Schwartz. I'm like, go Schwartz. I, this offensive line has not been nearly as good since he's been out of the lineup. Patrick Mahomes running for his life half the time. They really miss him. I think they can overcome it, but that is a major loss for this Chiefs offensive line. 
And luckily for Kansas City, week 17, and they don't have to play their guys uh, so if they don't want to. So they've already clinched that number one seed. But, Mitch, you've watched in recent weeks, the Chiefs are still good, and they're still the team to beat, but – you can, teams have played with them. Like yes. They're not blowing people out. They just barely beat the Falcons. They barely beat the Dolphins a couple of weeks ago. Like I'm not saying that I would pick teams to beat the Chiefs in the playoffs, but just because they're 14-1 and one doesn't mean they're unbeatable. And that's actually why I don't like the, with the Chiefs potentially resting some of their starters and not playing Patrick Mahomes. So that means you have a Week 16 game where, let's just face it. You didn't the, play well. They didn't play well. They, they kind of slept walk into it. They thought, all we got to do is show up, and we're going to be able to beat Atlanta. That didn't happen. So if you don't play week 17, then you don't play because of the bye week. You're basically going two and a half, three weeks without realistically playing some football. Playing at full strength, yeah. <sighs> That's not something I want to do. I mean, you see it far too often where that team gets that first round bye. They lose some of their momentum. They lose some of that mojo. And then they get hit. I don't know if that happens to the Chiefs because I am a believer when they want to win a game. They're the one team in football that can flip that switch. Well, and they did it against it. Atlanta, right? You're yeah. down four four minutes left, and Mahomes goes and wins the game for you. The, the one reason I will say I think sitting some guys could make sense here is for reasons we just talked about. A lot of their key guys are hurt. Sure. Your offensive line isn't at 100%. So resting Mahomes, I'd like to see him play a half. Get a couple of nice drives. Get that momentum back because the offense had no rhythm this yeah. past week. Uh, I'd like to see a couple of touchdown drives, but it looks like they're going to sit them. You guys can let us know what you guys think. Type R for the right move. Type W for the wrong move. I'd like to see them play a half, but it looks like they're going to play it safe, and Patrick Mahomes is not going to play in Week 17. Now, NFL fans, we got a ton of gear on sale for you guys, including these jerseys at chatsports.com slash jersey deal. You Dolphins fans can get this 201. If you're a Raiders fan, take advantage of this Josh Jacobs jersey and a whole lot more. Chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Mitch, I know you were doing some digging with our partner Fanatics, looking for the best deals. Tons of these jerseys, all of them are under 80 bucks. Some of them as low as like 40 and 50 bucks. So I saw Baker Mayfield, Odell Beckham Jr. jersey for 49 Nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Again, that's at chatsports.com/jerseydeal. That link will be available for you all in the description, and uh, you know, down in the comments. There's also some other jerseys of some older players. I'm just gonna not mention the names, but you can get an NFL jersey for eight dollars and ninety-nine cents. All I'm saying is this: like, if you got a kid and you need a jersey, you can pay eight dollars, get a jersey, and rip the name off the back. Like, you can figure out a or, way. Or you can be the guy that goes to the. Uh, to the party when we're allowed to do that again, of course, with the most random jersey there. It's always a great look. Chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Go check that link out and get yourself a jersey today.